Crime is sexy. What happens to stadiums after the World Cup? The FIFA World Cup is one of the largest global events, drawing in 5 billion viewers worldwide. However, once the attention fades, what happens to the stadiums that were built for the tournament? In this article, we'll explore the fate of the World Cup stadiums in Russia, Brazil, and South Africa, and examine how far Qatar plans to deal with the situation, including why they have already begun dismantling one of their stadiums. If you enjoy our videos, make sure to click the subscribe button. Over the past decade, Qatar has invested heavily in building a complete World Cup infrastructure, including modern stadiums, state-of-the-art training facilities, and improved transport links. The total cost of this investment was over $200 billion, which is significantly more than any other host country has ever spent. This is mainly due to the fact that Qatar had to build most of the infrastructure from scratch. Russia spent close to $16 billion, and Brazil spent $20 billion in 2000. But even $20 billion is a significant amount, especially considering that the World Cup only lasts for less than a month. Aside from gaining worldwide attention, host countries hope that the World Cup infrastructure will offer long-term benefits. The improved transport links could revitalize previously run-down areas, and the stadiums could generate revenue by hosting concerts and events. However, this vision does not always come to fruition. When we look at the history of World Cup stadiums, it becomes a apparent that this is not always the case. In the lead-up to the 2018 World Cup, Russia built nine new stadiums and upgraded three existing venues. The exact cost of this is difficult to determine, but it was a significant part of the $16 billion that Russia spent on the tournament as a whole. After the World Cup ended, Russia attempted to rent these stadiums to domestic football teams, hoping that ticket sales would help to cover the running costs. Unfortunately, this strategy failed, as most of the teams struggled to sell even half of the tickets to their matches. The local team at the finished Olympic Stadium in Sochi draw an average of only 6,000 fans, which is just 15% of the stadium's total capacity. These low attendances made it difficult to cover the running costs, and taxpayers are now footing the bill for the White Elephant Stadiums, which are described as expensive, pointless, and burdensome. The only one of Russia's nine new stadiums that's enjoyed a successful afterlife is the Kazan Arena, which has been transformed into a multi-purpose venue. It now hosts football matches, concerts, car shows, fashion events, and is decked out with restaurants, bars, and hotel rooms. This may be the key to a successful long-term existence, as it's been transformed into something entirely new. In Brazil, prior to the hosting of the 2018 World Cup, the majority of the stadiums were primarily used by local teams leaving thousands of seats empty. Despite the country's intense love for football, the stadiums proved to be too large for the average crowd, with the Arena de Amazonia in Manau being the most prominent example. The stadium was constructed to hold 40,000 spectators, yet the local team struggled to attract more than 1,000 fans. This resulted in the stadium incurring significant monthly losses, amounting to over $200,000. In a desperate attempt to cover costs, the Estadio Nacional was even used as a bus station, while the Arena da Dunas attempted to generate revenue by hosting weddings and children's parties. The above scenarios raise the question of whether the cost of constructing these stadiums was truly worth it for only six hours of football. For many Brazilian taxpayers, the answer would be a resounding no. A quarter of the country lives in poverty, and these funds could have been put toward more pressing issues such as healthcare, education, or infrastructure. Instead, the government invested in stadiums that are now being underutilized and draining the nation's finances. It's clear that the cost of building these stadiums was not worth it for the limited usage they received. While hosting the World Cup brought a boost in tourism and revenue, the long-term cost outweigh the short-term benefits. The stadiums now serve as a constant reminder of the government's poor financial decision-making and a waste of taxpayer funds. Not to mention, the construction of these stadiums often came at the expense of local communities, with many being displaced and forced to leave their homes to make way for the new facilities. This caused significant harm and loss to these communities, yet they received little to no benefit from the World Cup. It's evident that the cost of building these stadiums was not worth it for Brazil. The government's decision to 
invest in these facilities resulted in a significant drain on the country's finances and resources, while also causing harm to local communities. The lack of utilization of the stadiums only further emphasizes the mistake that was made. In the future, it's crucial that the government carefully considers the long-term implications of such investments and prioritizes the needs of its citizens.